Classic Country 100.1 WGLC. I'm Steve Pulaski, and on the phone lines right now, very special person, big fan of his music, and I know he's going to come at us with a lot of great stories. Mr. Phil Vassar, how are you doing today? Steve, I'm great, buddy. How are you today, my friend? Better now that I'm talking to you. It's been a weird year, to say the least. How have you been keeping busy, staying busy, and really staying sane? Well, I I was never sane to begin with, but you know what? It's uh, no, it's uh, it's been it's been interesting not not going out playing. And you know, we're a big touring act. We tour all the time, play year round all over the world. And so, I mean, just to have a retirement year in the middle of my career has been interesting. But but uh, but you know what? It's it's uh, a lot of silver linings. You know, my my daughters, I've got to see them and hang out with them a lot. I think that's what a lot of us have gotten to do: is see our family that we haven't, uh, you know, we that we didn't get to see. You know, right in the middle of our our uh, our life our careers the heat of it um but man you know we uh you know i've been writing and of course i'm working on my tv show songs in the cellar we just wrapped it up after 40 episodes and uh so good stuff good stuff would you say that it is uh just another day in paradise you could definitely say that i mean it's <laughs> it's always a, it's always another day in paradise around here i love it before becoming a household name phil you were the songwriter behind many hits like i'm all right bye bye one of my really one of my favorite country songs of all time little red rodeo i must say um where do you <laughs> look for inspiration in songwriting and you write many of your songs too like on your albums where do you look for inspiration for your music well you know i mean it's 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 really I always find it pretty easy to find it these days, and and uh, I always have man people go, "Do you have writer block?" I'm like, "No, no way." <laughs> I mean, if you just all you got to do is just walk around the the planet for a, a, a day, and you'll find plenty of things to write about. So, so I think for me personally, I, I've always I've always loved songwriting. I did actually, you know, I mean, I, I think I got to a, you know, when I was on the road and we were touring, you know, incessantly, and um, you know, I, I took a couple of years off really from doing it. Um, I think I needed it because I mean I'd been writing songs, you know, just about every day of my life for years and years and decades, you know. But I'm back at it again, you know, hard, and I, I love it. I, just, I missed it, and uh, I find that there's always something to write about, you know, especially with, you know, with life and you know, family, kids, you know, love, lost love, whatever. <laughs> You find yourself an observer. I know that's kind of the old saying is for writers as they kind of observe human conditions and they observe people. Do you find yourself an observer when you're out in the big world? Well, I do think, you know what, I think, I think, you know, I think we do see the world a little bit differently. Um, you know, I think we go, I mean, it's a million times a day. I go, that's a song. Ah, that's a song. <laughs> <laughs> that's a song. You know, somebody will say something and you just kind of. You know, if you have your little uh, writer net out, you'll, you'll catch it some days. And some days you miss them. But, uh, but I think for sure that there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff to write about, you know. And, and, and I, I love it. It's just something I enjoy doing so much. You infuse a lot of humor in your music as well. I got to bring up this song because I'll be completely transparent here. I hadn't heard it until about a month ago. I stumbled uh-huh. upon it. And I absolutely love it, and I need to pick your brain on this on the inspiration. Where did you come up with Bobby with an eye? <laughs> it was just fun. I mean, you know, I caught a lot of crap for that song. Um, you know, everybody's like, you know, of course, everybody's so serious. Nobody wants to laugh anymore. Matter of fact, I think that's kind of what we're writing about today. And I just think, you know, nobody wants to joke or talk about uh, or have humor. I mean, and see the see the light in life. Everybody wants to be serious and try to say find something wrong in everything you do or say and i think for that particular song you know bobby with an eye is a true true story um you know just one of my buddies he he dressed up um as a girl as a woman for for ladies night um and got in for free and drank for free because women drank for free for the you know it's one of those deals and then he just kind of kept the dress on <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and he and he's a big huge linebacker playing football playing tow truck driving guy and um anyway just in my hometown and and um you know what man nobody thinks anything of it it was just what it is and you know people are different and uh if we could just accept it 
and uh, accept each other for what they are instead of trying everybody to be the same or whatever. I love that everybody's different. If everybody was the same, it would just be a boring planet, I think. That's for sure. And I mean, when I first clicked on the video of the song, great video, by the way. It's fun. <laughs> when I was listening to it, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, I really hope there's nothing like, you know, for your sake, because I love you as an artist, I love you as a songwriter, that like could, you know, I mean, 2009 was 11 years ago. It's a different world now. But like, right. that song is very tastefully written. It's self- Celebratory, it's gleeful, like, and and that's what I love exactly. about it. It's good natured. Well, that's what I, that's what made me mad. I mean, I had I had a couple of guys come at me about it and say, "Man, you're cut." I said, "Have you listened to the song and what it says?" I said, "Obviously, you haven't, you know, because it is it's it's about being inclusive. It's about all those things, you know. About it's about it's fun, and uh, you know what? Everybody, it was a." It got released and it was huge for about three minutes before somebody jumped on a, their soapbox and and started you know moaning about it. So that that's just kind of what it was and and you know that's what we get in our genre or whatever. Everybody has got something to complain about. Oh my God, this is wrong. But it's, there's nothing wrong with the song. It's just funny and and like you said, if, if everybody just had humor um, and uh, could laugh about things, and they would uh, they'd get it. But they just don't. Some people aren't. I don't think smart enough to see that. <laughs> you know, so whatever. I just want to fight, right? And that Traveling Circus album has a ton of really good stuff on there. Another one I really liked from you, and I know, I know it wasn't a single, but it kind of leads into my next question. I really love that Where Have All the Pianos Gone song. Oh, thanks, yeah. You know, that just came out. I grew up listening to the Elton John, Billy Joel. Of course, I'm a piano player. Lionel Richie and Manilo and Jerry Lee Lewis, uh, Ronnie Millsap. I mean, these guys were my heroes, right? So I, I just... Uh, I, I, I realized one day, one, uh, the, actually, the, my label head goes, you know, you're the only piano player out there. I went, really? He goes, yeah, you're the only one. I'm like, well, wow, where have they all gone? I, I said, remember Stevie Wonder and Ray Charles and Billy Joel? And I, I mean, the list goes on and on. So that's where <laughs> I sort of kind of said, well, where have all the pianos gone? And I think it just kind of came out of that. And, and uh, I always liked that song. I kind of, uh, uh, I did it for a little bit in the show. And sometimes I, it's like we have so many songs, sometimes you just forget about these things. Absolutely. My father raised me on Johnny Lee, and my mother raised me on Billy Joel, so I even have found there myself asking that, too. Like, you don't hear a beautiful piano. Even my grandfather cut me on Jerry Lee Lewis. You don't hear that anymore. Jerry Lee was awesome. I mean, it was, I mean, when I saw him and videos of him lighting his piano on fire and stepping on it, and, I mean, I'm like, I jump on my piano and, and everything else and do push-ups on it or whatever I do, and it's just... <laughs> It's just fun, man, and I, I just, um, I, I love, I love being a piano player, you know, and 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 I like carrying that torch, you know. Sure, I, I didn't expect to go down this route with you, but I might as well ask you because it's it's apropos of that where where have all the pianos gone song? I mean, you hear now with a lot of country music, there's a lot of great country music being made, but you're also hearing, and you've heard this for the last couple decades. It's not new to this year, but you've heard a lot of pop influences encroach on country music, uh-huh. and a lot of pop sounds. And I worry though that like you're the center is being shifted in so many words. Like we're losing mandolins, we're losing fiddles, we're losing steel, we're losing those sort of classic sounds because the center keeps shifting. I don't know if you have any thoughts on that, but it's something genre discourse is always something I love to discuss on my shows. I think things evolve, things change. They get, the pendulum swings, they go back, they do whatever, you know, and I think I don't mind any of that pop, you know whatever pop infusion in the country the country does that it comes and it goes and it pulls it yo-yos back and forth but i, I just don't like bad songs and bad music <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's like i don't care uh you know some of the production sounds so good but you just listen to the song and it's just not good so i think that's kind of what good production can really hide you really hide a bad song and and that's what i think a lot of it is and it's like you know the songs sound alike um, it's, it's like, um, you know, we get, we get as Nashville and cities, everybody gets stuck in the same rut. It's the same tune. It's the same thing, the same beat. And I mean, it's like a lot of followers and no, no really innovators, you know? And, and that's what I always loved about the guys like Willie and the guys like, um, and you mentioned some Jerry Lee, you know, or, 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 uh, you know, Waylon Jennings, some of those outlaw guys, they, they were innovators. I mean, Pete, Johnny Cash and Buck Owens and George Jones and Merle Haggard, all these guys were innovative. They were, 
they wrote, they were all different. You could tell them apart. And today I can't tell a lot of people apart. It sounds like the same guys doing the same song, which is really interesting, right? I, I completely agree with you. And it's interesting to have your perspective, you know, being a veteran and being in the industry for so many years. I really wanted to see your take on that. Here's another one for you, too. Uh, I like to ask artists this, too, and I'm interested in what you would say. What's a song you wish more of your fans knew from you? Maybe it was a single that didn't take off. Maybe it was a deep album cut, you know. You're always playing just another day in paradise. You're always right. playing love is a beautiful thing. What's a song that you wish more of your fans new well it's interesting my fans a lot of them they love songs like where have all the pianos gone and they love songs like um sound of a million dreams that i wrote or, or you know a lot of the hits i had for other people postmark birmingham or, or or some of these other things joan rosalita is another song i do every night in my show i think just and if i don't people are like you didn't do joan rosalita you know it's because it's a it's a story song i think people like story songs and there's not a lot of story songs it's all about um, you know, it's like Vince Gill. <laughs> Vince Gill said, "He goes, I- I'm hot, you're hot, we're in a truck. That's the songs anymore." <laughs> I thought I literally about wrecked my car when I heard him say that in an interview. I'm hot, you're hot, we're in a truck. That's about all there is. <laughs> he's just like, and and, it, and he's not wrong. And I laugh so hard because Vince is such a really great writer. And and uh, but a lot of the emotion, a lot of the soul, a lot of the the real. Stuff like that. I mean, I think about "I Hope You Dance" or I think about like "Little Rock" by by Colin Ray. Or I mean, I mean, this the list could go on and on. I think about these great, great, great songs. They're like, "Oh, it's too long," or this or that. You know, and, and I've had I've had radio guys literally tell me, "I don't care about music. I care about ad revenue. That's all I care about." And I've had that. I mean, when when you have radio guys tell you that, then that's really not it's not good, right? You know. So we were talking about Billy Joel earlier, and I love his one song. I think very. Not many people remember it. It's the Entertainer, but he talks oh, about what a great song. He, he, he talks about Piano Man and that like offhandedly. It was a beautiful song, but it ran too long. If you want to hit, you got to make it quick. So they cut it down to three oh five. Exactly, exactly. Isn't that great? You know, mm-hmm. and and it's the truth. I mean, it's like you got to cut this song down. I mean, I've had to edit. Well, how do you edit out a verse? How do you edit out? The, stitch, the story song you can't it doesn't make any sense now so so you really do have to you just got to forge your own path do your own thing and man and you can either play that game or not you know and and um you know you have you have you definitely have options <laughs> you know you can do it and or not do it and and uh you know i love writing songs and i love making music and and playing playing live and it's just what we do i mean i love uh, touring and you know taking our songs to the to the folks and and uh, and and entertaining and making them forget about this crazy world for two hours right so I like just a couple more questions with you Phil Vassar I greatly appreciate you making the time once again but um pleasure, Steve. we were talking about you know Nashville country music and stuff is there anyone you're following now whom you think has a bright future in country maybe it doesn't even have to be mainstream could be maybe some underground artists some you know Texas scene artists is there anybody that you think that you listen to and you're like he or she is going to be a star in this genre well it's it's hard to say it really is I mean of course you know, I'm excited for my friends Old Dominion and and uh, and the Brothers Osborne and those guys, and I've known them for a long, long, long time, and and way before they became you know uh, stars or whatever. So it's it's just uh, I think I'm really always going to gravitate towards those singer songwriter guys, you know. So so I think um, you know, of course, Texas does have a great scene too, and and there's Americana has really turned out some great acts, you know, and and um, so it's really fun to to see it, you know, and I, I still listen to Merle Haggard. I still listen yep. to, you know, Billy Joel and, and Elton John and Jackson Brown and Tom Petty and Willie Nelson. I still listen to my heroes. You know, I think I, I just draw a lot of inspiration from their writing styles and what they, you know, the songs they wrote and, and uh, the records they made. So I think for me, you know, thank goodness I have two daughters that are, you know, younger and listen to these songs and I say, Dad, listen to this. And I'll go, oh, that's great. That's cool. Who is this? So seeing the world through their eyes, too, is really, really fun, Steve, you know? I imagine. And, I mean, you have such a dense catalog and stuff. And, I mean, I can think of a lot of different styles that you've tackled. And, I, and that, that comes from somebody who's well-rounded, I believe, and has a diverse crop of influences and people they listen to. And I can tell that just from listening to your albums. Well, of course, like you guys, too, especially the younger guy. I mean, you know, music, 
used to be. I mean, I would listen to Lionel Richie and Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton and Van Halen and Bob. I mean, how, <laughs> I mean we would listen to the, it was so diverse. And then everything became really, really compartmentalized. You know, there's country, there's classic country, there's 90s country, there's 80s country, there's. So it's like, but but I guess that's the way that they can, you know, whatever make things, um, you know, because people are very kind of picky and they like they like that. But also, most of my friends still listen to Sticks and ACDC and Journey and you know and uh, Tim McGraw, you know. So it's really kind of a um, eclectic. I think that's what you get, and uh, you get a lot of choices these days, which is really kind of cool. I always tell my friends, I say, I can go from Hank Williams to Billy Joel to Lil Wayne to Aerosmith like nobody's business. There you go. See, I mean, and I think that that's so cool. I love it. And, and, and there's really some, you know, if you look hard enough, there's really good music in all kinds of different genres and a lot of bad. You know, <laughs> you can just <laughs> rummage through what's terrible and find the good stuff. It's really good. A hundred, it's really fun. A hundred percent. Um, just two more questions for you, Phil. Big, any big touring plans with the vaccine rollout in America ramping up? I see you'll be in Rosemont come July, kind of in a little bit in our neck of the woods. You know, any big yeah. touring plans, big shows? What you got in the docket, man? Oh, man, we are pumped to get back out. But, yeah, I think by July is when we're really going to hit the road. I've got a, you know, I played Saturday night and uh, this past Saturday in Nashville. I did two shows and... Uh, you know, we're just starting to do a couple of private events here and there, corporate events, and ramping up to the. Uh, and we're going to do a Christmas tour. I, I haven't decided. <laughs> we haven't figured out who's going to be with yet, but we got a couple of amazing choices. So it's going to be really fun on that. And so I think you know this the rest of this year is going to be great. The last six months, especially, you know. So we're just gearing up, and I'm trying to get back into the groove, you know. Awesome stuff. Finally, I know you. I, I've read in the past that you're a big Baltimore Orioles fan. Any predictions for your team this year? <laughs> I tell you, I, I got. i was just about giving up on the Orioles. It's just so fun, you know. As a kid, you grew up with your teams, and and uh, you know it was always fun for me to watch the Braves too and watch the Cubs. I always liked, um, you know, you always have your your kind of your favorites, you know. But but I mean, the Orioles have just just been abysmal so i I just um i just don't know i i don't follow it like i used to of course when you're a kid you know it's fun to have the titans here now we got a pretty good football team and and in nashville pretty good hockey team in the preds and and uh so it's really fun to to do all that if it wasn't for sports i think i'd be crazy right now just think about a year ago when we lost sports for three months you know what it's it's just time for everybody to get get this uh, planet back on on track and I, i really don't I don't know if I, who I, who to believe anymore, man. I just think it's like you got some states that are completely wide open and they're doing just about they're doing exactly the same as the people that are completely shut. So what does that tell you? I don't know. I don't get it. I'm not a scientist, but I'm ready to play some music. <laughs> I love it, Phil. And then going back to your point about the Orioles, believe me, you're talking to a lifelong Chicago Bears fan. I know lifelong disappointment, my friend. Well, I tell you, man, the Bears, you know, Walter Payton's my favorite player in the history of life, you know. So I think, you know, I loved it. The old days of when Chicago and the Vikings and the Detroit Lions, the old black and blue division and the Packers, it was just purple people eaters and, the, and you know, Dick Butkus and Singletary. You know, Hell I mean, yeah. I'm just telling you, that was – that was the jams, man. I always, I've always loved Chicago. Has always been one of my favorite cities in the whole world, and and um, I tell you, I mean, they they really need a break right now. They need to get back, get back to it, man. They're just they're getting crushed up there. Well, I think come July, you'll be giving us something to cheer on when you play in Rosemont, Phil. Again, Phil Vassar, great country singer, excellent songwriter, joining us on the show today. Phil, I dearly appreciate you taking the time. This has been a wonderful conversation. Well, me too, Steve. I enjoyed it, man, and uh, good luck to you, brother. And stay in touch, will you, please? Absolutely, man. You stay safe and stay healthy, Phil. Back at you, and, and thanks to all the listeners, man. We appreciate you.